This is the DSD-201 Automated Endoscope Reprocessor from Medivators, a MinTech Corporation business group. Medivators provides workflow solutions in endoscopy from bedside through reprocessing. Your Medivators sales consultant, clinical support specialist, and field service engineer may be contacted by calling 1-800-444-4729 or by visiting our website at www.mintech.com slash The DSD-201 Endoscope Reprocessor is a programmable disinfection unit. The DSD-201 allows you to process two endoscopes, either simultaneously or independently, using the same or different disinfection programs. The DSD-201 unit features two independent stations operated by a single control panel. Each station has its own system of fluid lines and valves, a separate reservoir, pump, and compressor, and a separate disinfectant filter and air filter. Shared parts include the control panel, water filters, and the alcohol and detergent reservoirs. The DSD-201 functions as two disinfectors in one. The dual cover design offers double protection from disinfectant vapors. The DSD-201 minimizes vapor and fume exposure as compared to manual reprocessing. Medivators has data on file to show that with proper airflow and air handling systems, Glutaraldehyde-based products, including Rapicide, can be used in Medivator's reprocessors safely and below the maximum exposure limit of 0.05 parts per million. The, At the start of the day, check to ensure that the DSD-201 unit is plugged in. Check the control panel lights and screen for messages. If none appear, continue. Make sure the incoming water line is in the open position. The unit will not operate without water pressure. Check the external pre-filters. Inspect the gauges for noticeable water pressure drops and replace the appropriate filter as necessary to maintain 40 PSI. Check when the disinfectant and related filters were last changed. If the disinfectant is within its usable lifespan, Test it to ensure it is at least at the minimum effective concentration specified in the directions for use of the disinfectant. Regardless of the results of the MEC check, the disinfectant must be discarded once it has passed the lifespan indicated in the manufacturer's directions for use. Check when the disinfectant filters were last changed. These filters should be replaced with every disinfectant change. Water quality can vary geographically, seasonally, and intermittently, depending on a variety of factors, which will affect filter life. Saturation of the filters with sediment will reduce the incoming water pressure to drop below the minimum 40 PSI requirement in the DSD-201's flush cycle. When this occurs, the difference in pressure between the gauges will indicate which filter must be changed. Open the doors to inspect the fluid levels and filters. Check the disinfectant concentration. Insert a test strip into the reservoir through the opening in the reservoir. Replace the disinfectant if the minimum effective concentration is below the directions for use requirements. An alcohol purge is required at the end of each endoscope reprocessing cycle to prevent the growth of microorganisms and biofilms. Check the supply in the reservoir. 70% isopropyl alcohol should be filled up to the 800 milliliter line indicated on the reservoir. The internal filter checks must be performed on both stations of the DSD-201. The detergent and alcohol reservoirs are common to both stations of the unit. Check the time indicated on the control panel display for accuracy. Instructions for resetting the time will be explained later. Finally, check the printer paper supply. When you are disinfecting the first endoscope of the day, check the water pressure while the DSD-201 is in a flush cycle. 
If the pressure is dropped 5 or more PSI from the target setting of 20 PSI, it is a sign that either the pre-filter or the internal 0.2 micron filter is saturated. Replace the appropriate filter as soon as the endoscope disinfection cycle is completed. Changing of these filters will be covered later in this video. In the next section, we will demonstrate the steps necessary to disinfect an endoscope in the DSD-201. Personnel should wear protective equipment to prevent contact with infectious material. Personal protection equipment may include gloves, gowns, and protective eyewear. Your endoscopes must be properly pre-cleaned, leakage tested, and manually brushed in a detergent solution before disinfection in the DSD-201. Refer to the endoscope manual for complete instructions. The water-resistant cap should already have been attached and the valves removed during leakage testing. Attach the channel plug in the endoscope valve cylinders and attach caps onto the instrument channel port. Attach the forward water jet connector, gas and biopsy caps as needed. Pre-coil the endoscope before placing it inside the basin. Hold the endoscope by the control section. Loop the light guide cable so that the light guide connector hangs about one foot below the control section. Loop the endoscope insertion tube in a similar way. Place the control section at the right rear of the basin and the light guide connector at the left front. The distal end should be positioned so that fluids passing through it into the basin will be clearly visible. The distal end needs to be tucked under the scope to ensure that water or disinfectant doesn't shoot up and onto the floating lid. Endoscope channel connectors must be purchased along with your DSD-201. Matching the scope to the correct connector is critical to proper reprocessing of the endoscope. If you have any questions regarding DSD-201 connectors for your particular endoscope, contact your Medivator's sales consultant, clinical specialist, or technical support before proceeding. We will demonstrate the connection of an Olympus Xera 160 GIF video endoscope to the HU-0069 hookup. With the channel separator plug, biopsy channel plug, and waterproof cap attached. Connect the air port on the hookup to the air pipe on the endoscope Connect the suction channel tube on the hookup to the suction connector on the endoscope and connect the plug to the air and water supply connector port on the endoscope. Attach the inflow end of the basin hookup connector to the basin connector. The Olympus leak test hookup has an O-ring in the scope connector. Check its integrity and lubricate weekly with silicone oil. All other leak testers should be lubricated weekly with silicone oil to ensure ease of use and a secure connection. Remove the leak test connector from the basin when dumping or reloading the disinfectant. Failure to do this could result in water damage of your leak test system. We will demonstrate the connection of a Pentax 90 series endoscope to the HU0109 hookup. With the channel separator plug and waterproof cap attached, connect the water tank connector to the water tank opening on the scope.
Connect the lure connector on the hookup to the lure connector on the forward water jet flushing tube. Connect the suction channel tube on the hookup to the suction connector on the endoscope. Connect the hookup restrictor to the biopsy channel on the endoscope. Attach the inflow end of the basin hookup connector to the basin connector. We will demonstrate the connection of a Fujinon 400 series endoscope to the HU0151 and HU0113 hookups with a waterproof cap, valve adapter, 4 inlet cleaning adapter, and water tank connector attached. Connect two of the lure connectors to the valve adapter. Connect the suction channel tube on the hookup to the suction connector on the endoscope. Connect one of the lure connectors to the water jet lure connector on the scope and the other lure fitting to the lens connector Attach the inflow end of the basin hookup connector to the basin connector. Place the accessory bag in the basin. The accessory bag should be tucked underneath the scope to prevent floating. Place the floating lid on the basin. Make sure the endoscope is positioned in the basin so that the cover does not rest on the endoscope. If the endoscope or connectors touch the floating lid, reposition the endoscope in the basin. Close the station lid. The distal end should be positioned so that fluids passing through it are clearly visible. The distal end of the scope should be tucked underneath and must not point upwards toward the floating lid. This is to prevent fluid from going up and on top of the floating lid. Press the Station Select function key on the control panel. If you are using the left basin, select Station A. If you are using the right basin, select Station B. Most owners take advantage of the ability of the DSD-201 to provide printed documentation for each reprocessing cycle. The information recorded can be the endoscope serial number, operator ID, patient ID, and physician ID. This feature can be skipped or some fields can be skipped by pressing enter to pass unused fields. If using DSD data management, the same data must be entered as for the printer. Use the numeric keypad to enter the appropriate ID data. Press the Start key. DSD-201 units purchased after June 2008 or older units with software version 7.0 will prompt you HLD Test Pass. Prior versions of software will prompt you LCG Test Pass. The disinfectant in the reservoir should be checked prior to each reprocessing cycle as indicated on the disinfectant's directions for use. If the test strip indicates a pass, 
then press Enter to begin the cycle. If the test strip indicates a failure, then the disinfectant is not potent enough to be used for high-level disinfection. Press the Cancel button. Dump and reload with new disinfectant. The first operation is the flush cycle, unless you have a DSD-201 with leak tester. With the leak test option, the first step is the inflation and monitoring of the scope, which lasts approximately 40 seconds. Then the flush cycle begins. During the first part of any cycle, carefully observe the endoscope connections for leaks. The stainless steel channel plug in the control section is designed to permit the passage of small amounts of fluid. No other connections should leak. If leaking is detected, it is usually a sign of a bad connection. Select the appropriate station. Press Stop to correct the problem. Press Start to resume. Observe the connection at the light guide connector and ensure that liquids are moving through the connector. Verify that liquid exits the distal end of the endoscope. If there appears to be any blockage, the endoscope must be manually recleaned. The duration of the DSD-201 cycle depends on the parameters that have been entered. We will discuss programming custom parameters in Section 9. The LEDs in the Station Status and Warning section indicate which phase of the cycle is currently in progress. The air light will flash at the end of each cycle phase to indicate channel purging. The remainder of the disinfection process is fully automated. No further operator attention is required. The DSD-201 will dynamically print a record of the cycle, including the ID data, cycle complete message, any error messages, and basin temperature of the disinfectant. This function can be activated using the setup function, which we will discuss later. When the disinfection process is complete, the process indicator light on the front panel will turn on. The indicator light will flash intermittently if there has been a cycle interruption. Open the basin lid. Remove the floating lid and store it behind the lid supports. Remove the accessory bag. Dry and store the parts. Remove all connectors from the endoscope. Remove the endoscope from the basin. If the endoscope is being stored, thoroughly dry all surfaces with a clean, lint-free cloth. We'll review additional keys on the control panel. Heater on key. Press this key to toggle the reservoir heater for the selected station, either on or off. The LED is lit when the heater is on. The heater should always be on when using a chemical that needs to be heated to achieve high-level disinfection. Cancel key. Press this button to reject settings, reset an alarm, or abort a cycle. Reject an incorrect user entry by pressing the Cancel button. The previous value is restored or the previous screen is displayed. Abort the currently running cycle by pressing the Cancel button, then the Enter button. Reset an alarm by pressing the Cancel button, then the Enter button. Add Air Key. Press this key, then the Start key to air purge the endoscope or press during a cycle to add an extra air purge onto the end of the cycle. Start key. Pressing the start key starts a disinfection cycle or resumes an interrupted cycle in the station selected or starts some system functions. Stop key. Pressing the stop key In Section 7, we will demonstrate the procedures for dumping the disinfectant, cleaning the disinfectant reservoir, changing the disinfectant filters, and loading new disinfectant into your DSD-201. Loading the disinfectant can be accomplished either with the onboard automated loading system or by pouring disinfectant directly into the basin. 
One of the unique features of the DSD-201 automated endoscope reprocessor is that it self-disinfects during each cycle. No additional disinfection procedure is required to maintain your reprocessor. However, periodic filter and disinfectant changes are required. The first maintenance procedure we will demonstrate is replacement of the disinfectant solution. If your facility must neutralize the disinfectant solution prior to its disposal, empty the reservoir using the onboard transfer pump as described in the instruction manual or by using the Medivator's Medinute neutralization system. Disinfectant must not be neutralized in the reprocessor. Neutralization should be performed in an appropriate external container. Since the two stations of the DSD-201 operate independently, the DSD-201 allows you to change disinfectant in one station while the other is in operation, if necessary. The operator must wear appropriate personal protective equipment when performing this process. Ensure that the restrictor connector is snapped into the connector port. Press the appropriate Station Select function key for the station where the disinfectant will be changed. Press the Disinfectant Dump key, then Start. The DSD will prompt the user to Attach Restrictor. Ensure that the basin restrictor is snapped into the connector port before pressing Start again to drain the reservoir of the selected station. Disinfectant is pumped out of the reservoir and into the basin. From the basin, it flows out the drain. This cycle takes approximately eight minutes. After this, water is sent into the basin and down the drain to rinse it of any disinfectant residue. It is also possible to dump disinfectant through the onboard transfer pump. Details are in the DSD-201 instruction manual. When the disinfectant has been discarded using the disinfectant dump function key, the DSD-201 disinfectant cycle counter is automatically reset to zero. If the disinfectant has been removed from the reservoir using the onboard transfer pump or Medinute, the user should reset the cycle counter manually by using the setup function keys. We'll learn more about this in Section 8. When dumping heated disinfectant, do not manually turn off the disinfectant heater. It shuts off automatically when the disinfectant dump cycle is initiated. After fresh disinfectant is fully loaded, the heater will turn back on automatically. When the basin is finished draining, open the lid and remove the floating lid. Wipe the basin, strainer, and drain cover with a damp, lint-free cloth. Do not use paper towels. Replace the basin and strainer cover. The next step is to wipe out the disinfectant reservoir with a lint-free cloth. Remove the basin drain hose from the reservoir. Slide the reservoir out and remove the cover. Make sure that the heater has cooled sufficiently. Wipe the reservoir interior surfaces with a damp, lint-free cloth. Replace the cover on the reservoir. Slide the reservoir back into position. The disinfectant filter must be replaced every time the disinfectant is changed. Before changing the disinfectant filter, place an absorbent cloth under the filter connections to catch any remaining solution. Undo the quick connect fitting from the reservoir side of the filter. While holding the filter, undo the quick connect fitting from the pump side of the filter. The arrow on the filter, which indicates the direction of the flow, should point towards the pump. You are now ready to load the disinfectant. Automatically, using the onboard transfer pump, or manually with the load disinfectant function. The automatic transfer pump minimizes operator exposure to vapors by loading the disinfectant directly from the disinfectant container into the reservoir. To perform this, locate the reservoir to disinfectant filter connection and disconnect them at the red connection.
Fully remove and replace the old disinfectant filter. Locate the transfer pump tubing segment with the red male end and the female cream colored end. Connect the red male end to the red female end of the reservoir assembly. Note, on earlier DSD models, the female end of the reservoir tubing may be cream colored. Connect the cream colored female end of the transfer pump tubing segment to the cream colored male end of the three way valve located on the transfer pump. Locate the transfer pump tubing segment with the red female end and the long rigid end with rubber seal. Connect the red female end to the male red colored end of the disinfectant filter. Note, on earlier models, the male end of the disinfectant filter may be cream colored. Place the rigid end with rubber seal of the transfer pump tubing into a full disinfectant container. Rotate the three-way valve handle of the transfer pump until it points out from the sidewall of the DSD cabinet, which also indicates the direction that fluid will flow, which in this case is into the reservoir. Locate the manual pump switch on the upper right side of the cabinet wall labeled Chemical Loading Switch. Press and hold the switch until all disinfectant has been pumped into the reservoir and repeat with a new disinfectant container until four gallons has been pumped into the reservoir. Rotate the three-way valve handle back and return all tubing connections back to their original positions. After the reservoir has been filled by the onboard transfer pump, Rinse the feeding tube with water. Do not kink the tube during storage. Rapicide requires no activation, but it may take up to two hours to heat up to the required 38 degrees Celsius in the reservoir. Now let's demonstrate the other method for loading disinfectant through the basin. This may be your preference. First, change the disinfectant filter. Choose the appropriate station on the control panel. Press Setup one on the numeric keypad, and then press Enter. On the LCD screen, the letter of the station you are loading with disinfectant will show, followed by Load Dis. Press the Start key. The DSD-201 will prompt the user to Attach Restrictor. Ensure that the basin restrictor is snapped into the basin connector port in the side the disinfectant will be loaded before pressing Start again. For DSDs with the leak test option, there will be a 40 second delay. Start loading by pouring the disinfectant into the appropriate basin. During filling, tilt the disinfectant bottle onto its side to speed up the filling process. When the bottle is nearly empty, hold it upside down until all the liquid has been dispensed. Repeat the filling procedure until four gallons of disinfectant are loaded. If you wait 10 minutes in total, Completed will appear on the control panel display. Alternatively, if you wish to speed up the process, press the Cancel key after the load cycle is complete, and then press the Enter key to start the automatic rinse of the basin. After completion, Aborted will appear on the LCD. Press Setup 16 to confirm the unit has reset the cycle count to zero. If it is not, enter Setup 11, which resets it to zero. When all four gallons have been loaded into the reservoir and the DSD-201 is idle, confirm that the disinfectant level has reached the indicator line on the reservoir. Remember that your DSD-201 disinfector contains two independent disinfection stations. Each station has its own reservoir and disinfectant filter. The disinfectant on both sides must be changed on schedule. Replace the disinfectant whenever a concentration test strip indicates the disinfectant solution is below the minimum effective concentration or after the specified length of time.
In this section, we discuss water filter maintenance, including the external water prefilters, the internal 0.2 micron filter, and sanitizing the water lines. Then we will discuss routine maintenance items, such as the air filter, alcohol and detergent reservoirs, and the printer. Water quality can vary geographically, seasonally, and intermittently, depending on a variety of factors. The water pre-filtration system filters water in a step-down fashion. First through a 1 micron filter, then through a 0.45 micron filter to extend the life of the internal 0.2 micron bioretentive filter. Water quality and water volume affect the filter's useful life. The individual filters must be replaced as necessary. More frequent replacements may be necessary depending on the water quality in your area. Low water flow or a drop in water pressure during flush or rinse cycle of 10 or more PSI between gauges are indications of a need to change filters. Typically, the unit will have an increasingly longer rinse time, followed by low chamber alarms in the rinse cycle as the filters become blocked. Inspect each gauge to determine which filter to replace. The largest pressure drop is indicative of the filter that needs to be replaced. To replace the pre-filtration filters on the wall, turn off the water supply to the system at the shutoff valve. Open the air bleed valve near the top of the 0.2 micron filter housing and release the pressure to facilitate removal of the individual housings. The gauges should read 0 PSI. Place a container under the appropriate filter to catch excess water. Slowly loosen the filter housing with a filter wrench. Remove the filter, discard it, and any water in the housing. The two housings can be cleaned by washing and brushing with neutral pH low foaming medical grade detergent, rinsed, then dried with a lint-free cloth. Replace with a new filter of the correct size. The first filter the incoming water will encounter is the 1 micron filter. Replace this filter by placing a new filter right into the housing. The second filter is the 0.45 micron water filter. The rubber O-ring on this filter should be up and attached to the underside of the filter assembly. Before reattaching the housing, ensure the O-ring is in place and lubricant is on the O-ring and housing threads to aid in assembly and sealing. Reattach the housing to the top and hand tighten. Do not over tighten. Turn on the water supply and check for leaks. The 0.2 micron water filter must be replaced and the water line sanitized at least every six months. An important step during replacement is checking for leaks and sanitizing the water lines. Water line treatment includes sanitization of the filter and lines for approximately one hour or for the time programmed for the chemical used for sanitization. The sanitation time is factory set. If you choose to sanitize the water lines for a different contact time, contact technical support or a clinical specialist to make the adjustment. To get started, turn off the incoming water supply and disconnect the water inlet line. Attach the accessory hose. With the accessory hose pointing toward a large container like a bucket, slowly open the air bleed valve near the top of the filter housing and drain water from the housing. Loosen the internal housing using the filter wrench and remove. Wait for the water to drain from the housing. Rotate the filter to the left to unlock it, remove and discard the filter. The housing can be cleaned by washing and brushing with a neutral pH low foaming medical grade detergent, rinsed, then dried with a lint free cloth. Install a new filter by placing it into the filter cap and pushing the filter upwards into the filter housing cap. Turn the filter to the right to lock into place. 
Double check the filter installation by pulling down on the filter cartridge to ensure that it's locked in place. Confirm that the housing O-ring is in place. Install the filter housing onto the cap. Hand tighten the housing. Close the bleed valve. Reconnect the water line and slowly turn on the water. As the water pressure increases, check for leaks. Proceed to treat the water lines. First, verify that the machine is idle by using setup function 17. Verify there is no time remaining in the cycle. Connect the basin restrictors that came with the reprocessor in both the A and B basins. This will restrict flow into the basin. The rest of the process is automatically performed by the software by using Setup Function 6. To activate Setup Function 6, press Setup, press 6, Enter, press Start. The DSD will prompt you to attach restrictors. Ensure basin restrictors are in both the A and B basins. Then press Start again. Water line treatment includes sanitization of the filter and lines for approximately one hour or for the time programmed for the chemical used for sanitization. The sanitization time is factory set. If you choose to sanitize the water lines for a different contact time, contact technical support or a clinical specialist to make the adjustment. The time remaining can be periodically checked with Setup 17. After the cycle is complete, a message will print out. At this time, proceed to add approximately one gallon of disinfectant to the Station B reservoir to complete the water line treatment. If using a heated disinfectant, allow it to heat to the appropriate temperature, which can be verified by entering Setup Function 13 and viewing the display. Your DSD-201 system contains two air filters, one for each station. These filters should be changed every three months. The air filter is held in by a pair of Quick Connect clamps. Remove the filter by pressing down on the Quick Connect. Pull the air filter out of the connector. Place the new filter in line, making sure it's oriented properly. The ends of the air filter and the Quick Connect clamps are color coordinated to assist with the correct orientation of the air filter. Place the blue end of the air filter into the blue Quick Connect. Press it in until you feel it click. Repeat for the white end. In order to enhance the unit's cycle speed, it's equipped with an air tank. Condensation will naturally accumulate in the tank. It is recommended that it be drained at least once a month. This can be accomplished by simply locating the air tank in the back left side inside the cabinet between the reservoir and side A side panel. Pull the ring attached to the relief valve at the bottom of the air tank towards the left wall. Listen to hear or feel the purged air is free of condensation and release the ring back to its original position. The detergent reservoir should be cleaned daily. Detach the reservoir by unscrewing it from the fixed cap. Make sure the reservoir is rinsed with hot water to remove all detergent residue. Dry the detergent reservoir completely, then screw it back onto the fixed cap on the right side of the internal water filter housing. Sanitize the handles of the cover and floating lids along with the exterior of the DSD at the end of each day with a damp, lint-free cloth wetted with an EPA-registered sanitizer. If purchased, the active vapor management system is located on the back of the DSD-201. The active vapor management system has been designed to minimize exposure to chemical fumes. Inside of the vapor management system is a charcoal filter which neutralizes or removes chemical vapors drawn through this filter by a fan and puts fresh air back out into the room. This filter should be changed every six months. To change the charcoal filter, first turn off the fan switch on the vapor management system. Open the lock on the right side of the system. Remove and discard the old charcoal filter Install a new charcoal filter, close and lock the lid, turn on the fan switch, record the filter change on a log. 
To change the paper or ribbon, raise the printer compartment cover. Remove the used paper roll and install the new paper roll by unrolling several inches of paper from the new roll and feeding the paper through the printer feed slot. Press and hold the paper feed switch until the paper exits the top of the printer. Insert the spindle through the paper roll and position the roll in the slots. Confirm the roll turns freely. Pull the paper through the slot in the printer cover and lower the cover. When the print becomes difficult to read, it is time to replace the ribbon. Turn the printer power off, remove the cover, and press down on the grooved corners until the cover rotates upward. Lift the cover off the printer case. Push down on the right side of the ribbon, it is marked push, remove and discard the cartridge. If there is paper in the printer, slide the paper between the cartridge and ink ribbon before seating the cartridge in place. Align the cartridge in the slot and press down until it is firmly seated in place. Turn the small knob clockwise to adjust the ribbon tension. Reinstall the printer cover. Turn on the power. This concludes the section on routine maintenance of the DSD-201. In the next section, we will demonstrate how to program the unit. This section will demonstrate the procedure for programming your DSD-201. We will review how to set the system's time and date and how to program a disinfection cycle. Then we will look at some common setup functions that can be activated from the keypad. These procedures should be performed while the disinfection stations are idle. The instruction manual and the quick reference guide are both useful guides containing all these steps. Refer to them when necessary. The first programming step is to set the date and time. Press the Setup Function key. Press 2 on the numeric keypad to access the date function. Press the Enter key. It is the day of the month. Enter a number between 1 and 31 followed by the Enter key. The next entry is the month. Enter a number between 1 and 12 followed by the Enter key. The year is displayed. Type in the correct value and press Enter. The final entry is the day of the week. Sunday is considered day number one. Enter a number between one and seven, followed by the enter key. Notice that although you enter numbers for the day of the week, the display shows letters. To set the time, press the setup key. Select three. Press enter. The DSD-201 uses military time, which is based on a 24-hour clock instead of the 12-hour format most of us are accustomed to. 12 midnight is expressed as 0. 12 noon is expressed as 12. 1 in the afternoon would be 13. 11 at night would be 23. To set the correct hour, enter a number between 0 and 23. When you have selected a number for the hour, press Enter. To input minutes, enter a number between 0 and 59. Press Enter. One of the many useful functions of the DSD-201 is the ability to heat the disinfectant solution on a continuous basis. This enables you to begin reprocessing as soon as you are ready during the day. Press the Setup button. Press 1 and 3. Press Enter. Now you can see the disinfectant temperature. The left side of the display shows the basin temperature. The right side shows the reservoir temperature. Side A temperatures are shown on the top and side B on the bottom of the display screen. Programming your DSD-201. The DSD-201 allows you to set up to nine custom programs. The settings entered for each program are dependent on the disinfectant that you're using. It's important that you read the label on the disinfectant you're using to ensure the required settings are entered. 
To access the custom program function, press the setup button. Press 5 on the keypad, then press the enter button. The first option is to select a number between 1 and 9 to identify the custom program you want to set up. We will set up program number 1. Press enter. The first prompt is for the flush time. We will use a 30 second pre-flush which is the minimum needed. Press 0, enter for 0 flush minutes. Press 30, enter for 30 seconds to pre-flush your scope. The next prompt is to set the detergent soak time. When following the SGNA standards and manufacturer cleaning guidelines, you may choose to skip both the detergent soak and the detergent inject functions. These steps should have already been performed when the endoscope was manually pre-cleaned. To skip these functions, enter zero for each of the values. Therefore, for the detergent soak minutes and seconds, we will enter a zero followed by enter. And for the detergent inject prompt, we will enter a zero for the seconds. Each second corresponds to approximately three cc's of detergent. Different detergents have different dilution levels. The next parameter is the dis or disinfectant soak time. This is the time required for the endoscope to soak in the disinfectant solution. For example, Rapicide requires a 5 minute soak time at 35 to 40 degrees Celsius to achieve high level disinfection. Therefore, we will press 5, then enter for the disinfectant soak minutes. Press 0, then enter for the number of seconds. Rinse 1 is the next parameter to set. Rapicide requires two rinses. We will set the first rinse time for one minute. For set rinse minutes, press 1, enter. For seconds, press 0, enter. For the second rinse, we will also set the program to a one minute rinse. Press number 1, enter for rinse minutes, and 0, enter for rinse 2 seconds. The Rinse 3 screen is now displayed. Since Rapicide requires only two rinses, we will enter a zero in for both the minutes and seconds screen to bypass the third rinse. However, if you are using a disinfectant like OPA, that requires a third rinse. You would program the third rinse here. The alcohol flush is the next parameter to enter.